Lunch from Total War here, and today we're going to be doing a top 5 video on my favorite non Total War games. So these are the games that when I get sick of Total War, which does happen from time to time, that I basically go to to unwind essentially. These are games that I've been playing for years and that I keep going back to play them again and again and again. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. So those of you who watch my live streams will know that my appearance at the best of times is pretty grubby. I don't really like putting a lot of time and effort into basically dealing with all of my hair. And that's why Manscaped is so useful, because I don't need to put a, t a lot of time and energy into the infrequent times where I do to actually decide to do something about it. So, unfortunately, my balls are a bit wrinkly, and so regular sort of trimming stuff can lead to accidents, uh, which is why the uh, Performance Package 3.0 really makes it easy for that to just not happen. I haven't yet managed to scrape or injure myself, uh, which is actually kind of a miracle because I'm kind of an idiot when it comes to this stuff. I certainly have in the past done that. Uh, and it's just good to make everything down there sort of look and not smell like a wet sock. And, you know, being married, that really sort of helps. I mean, the thing is, taking care of yourself down there, it's not necessarily for you. It's for everybody else around you to not be disgusted by your appearance. And that's why I'm such a supporter of the Manscaped products. So if you're an international and outside of the US, you should definitely check out the Performance Package 3.0. But if you're in the US, I believe you can check out the Performance Package 4.0. So they've got a special package for your special package. Check out the link in the description for 20% off Manscaped. And be a Sigvold, not a Throg, and take care of your junk. Let's move on to the video. Taking the number 5 spot goes to Crusader Kings 2. This is a game that I've played nearly 1000 hours on and I can rely on this game. Basically if I'm just not feeling like playing any Total War games during a weekend to just load up Crusader Kings 2, play a campaign and it'll sort me out through the weekend basically. Uh, I haven't played it that much lately just because there's been other things going on but I know that I can always just come back to this game and, and uh, I've not burnt out from it essentially. And you might be thinking, Crusader Kings 2, why not Crusader Kings 3? Well, truth is, I just don't feel like I'm finished with Crusader Kings 2 yet, so I'll probably eventually move on to Crusader Kings 3 one day, but I just don't feel the need to at this stage. So Crusader Kings 2 is just such a long campaign as well, going from the earliest start date to the absolute finish, that I've only ever done it twice. And it just takes absolutely forever, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you want to go through that. So I've done, I think, two full map completions. Uh, this is a game that I absolutely love, but I probably don't play it that much these days because there have been other games that have come through and that I probably play a little bit more these days. But if you haven't tried out Crusader Kings 2, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it does require a fairly steep learning curve. My first few campaigns with Crusader Kings 2 did not go very well because a lot of random things can happen. But once you do learn the mechanics and understand that it's a character-based game, not an empire-building game, although you can build an empire, um, but when you realize that it's all about your characters, then you can start to micromanage things a lot easier and then ensure that you're not going to get totally wrecked in the early parts of the campaign. But overall, I absolutely love this game, but I'm giving it the number five slot. Let's move on now to number four. Taking the number four spot goes to Factorio. So this is a game that when I first saw it, I instantly knew, oh my god, I'm going to sink in thousands of hours into this game. But I didn't realize how many hours I would actually sink in. Currently on my Steam uh, Steam profile, it says that I've clocked 6,371 hours on this game. The only other game on my Steam profile that I've clocked more hours on is actually Total War Warhammer 2. And for quite a long time, I had uh, more hours clocked on Factorio than Warhammer 2. But that's largely because this game came out before it. So... In one playthrough alone, I think I clocked about 5,000 hours in this game because I just played it so much. I played it to the point where I actually ended up breaking the game and the save file just couldn't load anymore. There was just so much stored crap that I actually broke the numbering system. So I've done it before in Total War games, but I did an integer overflow in this game where I stored so much copper plates that it would actually exceeded 2.14 billion 
and the game couldn't count it, and it broke the save file permanently, and I couldn't load the save file any further. But of course, that was such an extreme amount. It took thousands and thousands of hours in order to reach that point. So it's definitely not really an indictment of this game, because nobody would really get to that extent. And all I had to do to prevent that from happening was just not store so much copper. But... This is such an amazing game, and I really can't floor it in any way. Obviously, the graphics might turn some people off, but it runs so smoothly, you know, until you've got a factory the size of bloody New York, which is basically what I had. You know, I had a train system that I could get on from one end, and I could ride it for about half an hour before I actually got to the end system. It was that big. It was just, just absolutely massive. And all the time, aliens were constantly attacking, and the game was just loading in, like, billions of these bloody creatures and getting killed constantly. And all of these things were running all simultaneously. And I would quite often leave this game running overnight uh, just because it was just sitting up there mining millions and millions of ores and uh, doing things automated. Um, I absolutely love this game, and that's why it's getting uh, the number four spot on this list. Let's move on now to number three. Taking the number three spot goes to Ark Survival Evolved. Now, this is the game that I've got the third most number of hours on, on clocked on Steam. So, I've clocked 4,370 hours on Ark Survival Evolved, and unlike with Factorio, where a lot of that was AFK hours, pretty much none of that is AFK hours, because you turn your eye for a second on Ark Survival Evolved, and you could just die. Now, back in 2015 and 16, where I first got into this, I was heavily addicted to Ark Survival Evolved because I got into official servers, uh, I, was, I had a, a, um, a clan, shout out to anybody who was in the original Legends Legion, and we dominated a server for a short time. Anyway, I no longer play official servers because I don't have that kind of time to dedicate to it. It was literally a full-time job. Uh, now, basically what I do is I just play single player with my wife. We just play whenever we feel like it. We play it for a couple of hours and then we log off. We've got a game running that we've been playing since last year. And we just come on, do a couple of things and then get back to work essentially. This is our unwind time. But it's something that I really enjoy playing by myself and also with other people. And as many of you guys know, I'm not much of a multiplayer person. But this is also something really good that might wife actually really enjoys to play with me because I can't really get her into Total War but I did actually get her into Ark Survival Evolved and now quite often I find her watching the Ark Survival Evolved YouTubers uh, because she enjoys <laughs> this stuff more than Total War but I think the main thing that I love about Ark Survival Evolved apart from the fact that it's a bit of a buggy mess which you know like Total War games that seems to attract my attention is that the game doesn't really hold your hand and in fact it just dumps you on the island and then you just do whatever you want and I really love games that just don't hold your hand and allow you to explore the world gather whatever you want and just give you tons of stuff to do not everything is enjoyable and sometimes this game is incredibly frustrating but a lot of the time that getting something very difficult done can be very rewarding and Ark Survival Evolved provides those experiences in abundance and that's why it's getting the number three spot on this list Anyway, that's the end of this one, so let's move on to number two. Taking the number two spot goes to Skyrim. Now, on my Steam library list, uh, this game actually has the lowest number of hours out of this top five list. I've only got 526 hours on this game, and the reason for that is because I only fairly recently got into Skyrim. Those other games I've been playing for years, but Skyrim I only recently discovered. Even though I've... I've been very much aware of it since 2011. I never got it at the time. Uh, so I've been mostly clocking up those hours over the past year. And of course, I'm more busy these days than I was in 2015. But I imagine I'm still going to clock more hours on this game. And I probably will one day hit that 1,000 hour mark. Now, the funny thing is after 520 hours of this game, I haven't even come close to actually finishing it in terms of the main storyline. In fact, I've barely even done any of it. All I do is the basic stuff, opens up the world, and then I just go and do my own thing. And most of the time, I just end up going around securing as much loot and being a kleptomaniac and then just stashing it all in my house. I don't know what it is about me when it comes to RPG games, but I just like being an absolute klepto and stealing everything that everybody owns, seeing what I can get away with, and then just stashing it in my basement. And many of you guys have seen and had a good laugh at the 
pile of gold that I have stored on one of my playthroughs there, which is both my shame and my pride. In fact, sometimes I'm sitting there st piling gold on my gold pile, and my wife comes in, and it's just like pure shame on her face. Uh, because she knows what I'm like, but at the same time, it's just it's just me to the extreme, basically. And this game satisfies that aspect of me uh, to the extreme. I like a game that doesn't hold my hand and just lets me do whatever I want. Many people do say that uh, Skyrim isn't as good as the older Elder Scrolls game, but again, I, Skyrim is the first Elder Scrolls game that I've ever played, and maybe one day I'll play those other ones, but I just haven't yet. But yeah, Skyrim's uh, introduction into my Steam library has definitely made me excited for future iterations of Elder Scrolls games, and I might even cover Elder Scrolls 6 on the channel. Maybe even we'll do a live stream of uh, Skyrim one day, because it is a ton of fun. I just love all the different things that you can do. Some of the amazing stories that, that I've encountered in this game, just like bugs and stuff. One time, one of the funniest things I ever saw happen in a video game was when a dragon landed. I was trying to chase the dragon because I wanted to kill it, and a giant got on its back, and then the dragon flew off into the sunset. And I just couldn't believe this giant riding a dragon. It was ridiculous. And it only ever happened once. Um, but I'm sure shit like that happens all the time in Skyrim, because this game is full of bugs. But none of the bugs are truly game-breaking. It's just like, well, that's just not polished. But at the same time, it's like, because the game is so freeform, it allows for that kind of stuff to happen. That's, that's the primary reason why I love this game so much. Anyway, let's move on now to the number one game that I think is my favorite non-Total War game. Taking the number one spot goes to Anno 1800. I absolutely love this game. This is the game that whenever I've had like a bad day or I want some time off from doing Total War stuff, I pretty much go straight to Anno 1800 and just spend a few hours on this. This is a game where I can play this game for 15 minutes, an hour, four hours, whatever, and it's got me covered. Uh, I don't feel like I need to play this game in huge bursts. I can play one campaign across six months and just pick it up once every now and again and it's totally fine. This particular campaign I started well into last year and I've now clocked 453 hours just in this one uh, particular campaign here and I have others going where I'm doing other things as well. So the thing that I love most about Anno 1800 is of course the sandbox experience. It just doesn't hold your hand and allows you to just keep getting more and more efficient. It allows you to keep storing more and more stuff. At least get you more and more population and really, for me, I guess just seeing numbers go up it just provides some degree of satisfaction. Um, increasing my storage capacity to a new level, increasing my research level to a new level, uh, influences to a new level, the max amount of population to a new level. You know, all these numbers that just keep going up after achieving more and more levels of efficiency provides me with, you know, a lot of satisfaction. That's part of what I like to do in Total War games as well. Achieve, you know, a higher number, see the highest melee attack you can get, highest ward save, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, not so much in a war perspective with this. You know, very little of my time is spent actually doing war in this game. Usually with my competitors when I've reached this point here, I just I just buy them out. So I just go over to where they might be and just, um, well, I've kicked them out of most areas. I just, I just, I leave them around just because I can, um, I can get certain items from him, but if I just want to get rid of him, I'll just buy him out. You know, it only takes a few minutes and then I just take his island. And uh, some of the things I just absolutely love doing is just trying to make things as efficient as possible. So there's islands where, like this, where I think I've pretty much perfected it, where there is nothing but investor population. However, uh, by using the, like, the base number of workforce that you automatically get, and by... Um, by reducing the workforce with certain items, you can actually get them to be self-sustaining without actually having a single worker live here. So if we have a look, because of my influence here, I get uh, 200 island workforce in all islands, right? So that doesn't give you much to work with, but using items, you can have, you know, this mine here being operated for seven workers. Uh, this fishery here being worked for 12 farmers. This one here, Working for, well, I'm, I'm going to have to borrow um, engineers from there from another place, but that's fine. Because maybe it's another place doesn't even have um, a uh, engineer working. So overall, I've got surplus because uh, I think I've still got, yeah, I've still got an engineer island here that I need to turn into um, 
uh, inf uh, what's it called investors. But yeah, just doing this kind of stuff where I haven't got them perfectly sustained. It's it's still a work in progress, but just having these entire islands. I remember a little while ago I showed people with basically Slum Island, where it was just all workers. Well, guess what happened to that island? Because that's this session here. It's all in. Oh shit! <laughs> well, I got some problems. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's not all perfect. I uh, yeah. It's still a work in progress, but I did get rid of all of the workers, and they're now, they're now investors. However, they're all rioting investors and burning shit down. Uh, so this this one here will need to be worked on. But um, you know, that's the great thing about this game. Even when you think you've reached a new level of like efficiency, it so, sort of creates a new problem. So I've got things going all over the place, like looking at my trade routes all over the place. It's not super efficient. I've started grouping them up. Uh, recently, but there's a lot more things I need to do to make things even more efficient. So there's just a lot more work to go. And I mean, even after 453 hours, I'm still finding things to do in this game, and that's what's really love about it. So uh, part of that reason as well is because when they add a new DLC, I usually have to change just about everything about how I do things. Um, like what happened with the Docklands DLC, I had to change a lot of my production stuff because a lot of the production chains could just be eliminated entirely. That's what I love about this game. It just keeps changing, keeps getting better and better as time goes on. I really can't recommend this game enough. And that's what I spend most of my time on these days. Anyway, that's my top five favorite non-Total War games. Let me know what you think of these games um, in the comments below, whether you love these games, whether you don't like them. I'm curious to know what games you think I would enjoy. It's pretty obvious that there's a pattern between all five of these games. I like games that don't hold my hand and that have a sandbox experience. They just let me do whatever I want. The more freedom the game allows me, the more likely I am to really fall in love with it. The more it restricts me, the less interested I'm going to be. So, curious to hear what you guys' thoughts are. And don't forget to check out Manscaped. See you next time, fuckers. Appreciate you. Bye.